I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And today we have some very special guests that you might recognize if you uh, have been in the ghost scene for a little bit. We have the Ghost Brothers with us. Hey, Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. everybody. What's happening? So, y'all, for those of uh, our listeners who may not know or haven't seen your show, um, would you like to introduce yourselves, give yourself a little um, background? You know what? I, there's nothing more I would love to do <laughs> than introduce myself right now. <laughs> okay. uh, my name is Dalen Spratt, and for those that don't know, I am the bad boy of paranormal himself, a.k.a. sexual chocolate, a.k.a. the leader of the Ghost Brothers, a.k.a. I am better than Jawan and Marcus, look better than Jawan and Marcus, <laughs> and it's my show, but I just let them own it. Hey guys, I am Marcus, <laughs> right. the actual entertainment of the show, <laughs> the actual one with talent. Dalen. <laughs> nah, man, I'm part of the, uh, I'm one third of the illust- illustrious, illustrious, electronic. Ooh, give me one more. Give me electrifying. One more. One more. Deftifying. Ooh, wow. yeah, we, we ride defi- motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not with, with, definitely with helmets, but not fast motorcycles. Not motorcycles you just put in the seat. They got three wheels. They got three wheels. Yeah, yeah, three wheels. Oh, it's three wheels. Oh, 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 it's a little fast for me. I am the Marcus Harvey, a.k.a. Hot Ham and Cheese. Ooh. Stick it to the roof of your mouth, ladies. That used to be my old uh, stripper name back in the day, so don't judge me. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> oh, but last, certainly not least. Not mm-hmm. least. Mm-hmm. Not least. Uh-uh. It is. Who is he? Jawan and only. Ooh. Oh, it's yeah. a, I like that's that. a, that's a that's nickname. A normal poppy, ladies Ooh. and gentlemen. I am another third of the Ghost Brothers. I am been voted the sexiest of the Ghost Brothers. Okay. Is, but that is still up for debate. That is definitely. <laughs> Cause you know, once it hits the internet, it's pretty much fact. Cause you know, the ladies like, love just, big boning men. You know what I'm saying? They love big boning men during this time of season. Listen, you should have stuck with it, cause then you drop weight. And yeah, like, you just lost. Couldn't it. hold that position. Couldn't no hold, more. Could yeah, have, couldn't hold the chubby, the chubby yeah, lovable. All the chubby chases. Yeah. Marcus was out there waiting. I was waiting, and y'all didn't say nothing. <laughs> Except for Tina. Thank y'all so much for having of us. Course. We are excited. <laughs> Naturally. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank y'all for carving out some time because uh, if you didn't know, uh, they are here in Savannah right now for yeah. their uh, Ghost Brother Savannah Takeover, which is just going to be an insane weekend. Um, and I know y'all are like going to be going so hard. So we really appreciate you coming out and actually being able to s- spend an hour with us and talking and lis- uh, telling your stories to our listeners. So yeah. um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, um, now I do want to start out with the first thing and probably the biggest question that we've gotten from our listeners when they found out that y'all were coming on the show, you always tease that, you know, like you, uh, started getting into the paranormal cause you each had your own, um, experiences when you were kids, but you never told us the story. So what's the story? <laughs> How do you get into this? <laughs> it changes every five <laughs> stories. <laughs> okay. Okay. And it's really like, if we tell you now it's like, we're locked in. Yeah. And That's we, fair. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, yes. and it's interesting because I think every ghost hunting show has a, a, a the, the the secret story yeah the, like the, the origin the origin story yeah. that 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 drives it but uh i think it, in in that regard it's it's uh if if, if we're not going to get into specifics uh if we followed into how did how did your paths cross i get it. i could route? i could no, definitely do, no, yeah. i got you for that one you you sure yeah, I, I, I got you for that one um me and Dalen met first. Um, I was selling him crack, and uh, <laughs> that was early, that was the early eighties. He, 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 he was he was he was he was on that stuff. I'm just gonna put that out there. When they got to me, he was strung out. He yeah. was a lot yeah. of hot winters yeah. and cold it was, summers. It was wild. But yeah. I had a younger no. brother at the time when we, mm-hmm. when we all grew up together, 
and literally one day it was raining and he went outside and like he had this little toy boat mm. yeah. and he was just playing with it outside. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it was just floating down the street and he was chasing after it. And I think like maybe the boat went into the drain or something. Right. So I'm got him. Yeah. Saw first it. Clown. it was crazy. It was crazy. So yeah. me, Juwan and Marcus came together after that and we was just determined to try to find my little brother. But it's amazing. Yeah, Bro, hold yeah, it together. Hold it together. I'm together. trying, one. You get, y'all got tissue? Hold yeah. on a second, man. I think we do. Because we mean, couldn't find a little We boat. ain't seen them <laughs> since. But that boat, it's still a rowing. Ah. Does it still float, too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They all float. <laughs> it gets crazy. Everyone floats. It's That's crazy. True. It gets crazy out here. <laughs> no, man. You know, none of you look like you're from Maine. Yeah. Right. Right. No, no, no. no. no, no. This well, was, there, was, there was one of us. This was there's it. one, there's this was one in Maine. In all of Maine. <laughs> all of Maine. I don't know how he got this. This is on the south side of Atlanta. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> the trenches. <laughs> No, nah, man, we all had our own individual stories, man, growing up. Like, I know for me personally, uh, I used to visit my grandmother all the time when I was little, like seven years old in a small town in West Texas called McKamey. And I'd never forget, I went to visit her one spring break, and I had an older cousin who was in her 20s. And she had a best friend. Her best friend was dating a guy. He worked for the animal control. And they got into a domestic dispute. He ran outside to his truck and pulled out his rifle. He shot her once in the head and shot himself in the head. True story. She survived. He passed away. This is a small town in West Texas. Everybody knows everybody. So my grandmother decided to go view the body of the young man because, like I said, everybody knew everybody. So her and her friend took me with them to this funeral home to visit and see this young man. And I'll never forget walking into the church. His body was in the casket at the front of the church. We walk in, and he's wearing, like, this light gray suit, white shirt, and a thin black tie. And I remember thinking to myself and asking my grandmother, I was like, I thought you said he shot himself. Like, even at seven, I've seen enough cartoons like Daffy Duck. You blow yourself with a shot. With a, you know what I'm saying? You, right. At least yeah. your bill flips around. Wait, right. so you were expecting, your whole jaw. You expected homie to have a uh, blown off bill? At seven years old, yes. Okay, I, can, I, know in his face. I, I, I was expecting to see a hole, a hole in, his, okay. in this dude's face. But they he gonna... literally looked like he was just asleep. Like, there was nothing wrong with him. Really? Yeah, and my grandma was like, oh, this funeral home just does a great job. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a testimony yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. like, right. <laughs> like said, New Bethel Funeral Home. <laughs> Great A service, <laughs> She said, they got my business, baby. Like, they yeah. got my Wait, business. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He, this whole face is together. But no, nah, my grandmother's friend looked at me and said, Dalen, have you ever touched a dead body before? Goodbye. Y'all, I'm seven. No. I'm seven. And you wanted to tell her yes. Sure, you lady. All, all, the time. Time. All, day. all the time. I saw a dead body yesterday. <laughs> right. And it's going to be your This time. lady grabbed my hand at seven and put it on the chest of this young man in the casket. This is true story. I'm looking at my, at my grandmother like, are you not gonna do nothing to your friend? Yeah. First of all, you're too old to be hanging around bad influences. No. Now, that's first and foremost. But literally I jack my hand off the, off the guy's chest and I ran out the sanctuary like screaming. And there, of course they came and got me whenever we left. And then that night I was sleeping on my grandmother's couch Similar to this one, but it had plastic on it. Okay. Okay. I and I was like that. three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. How hot was it? First off, how hot was it? It's spring break in okay. Texas. Okay. So, so it's like, so they had to it's peel you off. You didn't just I'm get up. You didn't get to up. Peel I'm you off. Sweating. Yeah. You, you got suctioned <laughs> off. What's the sound effect? <laughs> Man, I wake up at three and I look into the kitchen. And standing in the door frame, I promise you, was that same young man wearing the same light gray jacket, white shirt skinny black tie, and he was linked up against the wall frame just staring at me. And I screamed to the top of my lungs. Like my grandmother came running in the room. Like Marcus said, we make a joke out of it, but she literally had to peel me off of this couch. Like I was yep. stuck to it, sweating, mm -hmm. screaming. And I just remember sweating pointing, and, and she looked, and he was gone. Crazy. My man was sweating, screaming, oh, and man. stuck. Oh, man. stuck. <laughs> All in my tiny whiteies, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, the man. Interesting theory. <clears throat> Maybe you witnessed your grandmother's booty call. Oh, wow. Mr. Earl. I think that, that might have been Mr. Earl. First of all, my grandmother's a saint. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> all right. You ain't going to all right. talk about my grandma. <laughs> all right. You know how them saints be. Right. Yeah. Them saints be a little tainted, baby. Come on now. That's how they became saints. <laughs> yeah. What about That's you, Jawan? Uh, I had a... Well, I was going to say a similar experience. I was young. Uh, it was in a small town, actually, in Mississippi, my grandmother's town. Um, and there was a cemetery that was across the street from my grandmother's house. And so 
like as kids in the neighborhood, we used to dare each other to try to run through that cemetery. Uh, and kind of like on the show, I'm usually the one that just kind of takes that task. Like, uh, you know what? I got it. I'll go for it. So I started out in the cemetery. And I took off running. And like all of a sudden, I feel like this presence of something behind me immediately. Immediately. I don't know what it is. And I turn around and I don't see anything. I'm still running. And I still feel this presence. Uh, and I'm like, yo, is this one of the other kids? Like, I don't see what's happening here. Um, I turn around, I still don't see anything. And in, this, in my mind, I'm like, okay, can you even outrun a ghost? If that's a thing, right? Like, I just don't know what it is. I'm just running. Mm-hmm. I'm probably like 10, 12 years old at this time. Uh, but and you don't see the three security guards <laughs> 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 chasing your ass. Hey, 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 no man, you know this my job. <laughs> he got the inhaler out and everything. That's why he thought it was a ghost. That man had ass. <laughs> 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 Hey. That's what I heard in Hold my on ear. Second, as, I'm fella. <laughs> as I'm hopping over gravestones, that's what I hear in my ear. <laughs> that's him saying, Ooh, I can't wait to catch you. <laughs> Haunts your dreams. Yeah. Ooh, I'm Literally. tired of you kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that is. But that was like that was my first introduction to like being in a place and feeling like the presence of something that I couldn't see. Okay. Uh, and like I was like. I don't know what I was running from, but I was just running with like no explanation. He said, I yeah. was running. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, um, those two stories have um, literally contaminating a death scene yeah. with him yeah. and trespassing. Mm-hmm. Um, mine was legal. So we were actually doing the show when I had my first experience with a the paranormal, which was kind of unique. I think that that's what made the uh, whole situation um, with us co- coming together and teaming up, you know, real cool. Cause they had already had experiences. Like I had, I was like, only experience that I've had with ghosts was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that's, that's, and that's scripture based. Come Take on church. church. Ebo Shata, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, man, um, I would uh, say that my first experience was when we were at Sorella's Weed House actually. Mm-hmm where we're gonna be um, investigating tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, we were in the um, enslaved quarters Mm -hmm. uh, upstairs. Of course, you know, a lot of you know the story. Mm -hmm. And this was my first uh, actual opportunity to investigate the paranormal. These two gentlemen left me on uh, a solo trip in that room, so I was isolated. And just to see like uh, the lights flickering and literally feel a presence is uh, something that I was like, okay, this is actually real. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to actually see a shadow figure appear, it was like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. So, you know, mine was a little bit more when I was an adult, you know, unless when I did happen when I was a kid, I just blocked it out of my mind. Not I'm pretty sure I probably did that. At that point, yeah. you probably labeled it as an imaginary friend. Yeah, that's my right. imaginary friend, Henry sure. or something. Yeah. Absolutely. You right. know, who's making stuff move. But, you know, as, as so now that we've been doing the show, man, it's like, I'm a firm believer in this stuff, you know, seeing it, you know, countless times, countless investigations. Like, this is a wild world, man. It's a wild it world. Is. It's a wild, wild world. world. Wild place, baby. <laughs> wild yeah. place, baby. Get some dangerous. Them ghosts, they some wild boys. <laughs> well, how do you go from interest in the paranormal to investigation? Like, you know, what, what path did you take? Or was the show the impetus for doing the – were you – doing investigations prior to the show or, uh, or was it it was definitely the impetus yeah awesome mm. he yeah, liked that sure. word so much I mean, that he, I he wanted to repeat it, it. Yeah. Yeah. i was like don't try he to, didn't know if don't he was using it right but he's going to use it to the word we caught what you was picking up baby. he was like it was he said the impetus okay yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was it definitely was the answer hey it definitely was the beginning of our journey that was not yeah people don't even know that about us but i think that's what made the people that love us actually love the show because we had no background in paranormal at all and to be completely honest, it came from a simple idea of us watching one of the paranormal shows one night, just being on television and not seeing any black people doing it. And just asking that simple question, like, why are there not any black people on television hunting ghosts? Then we quickly found out there weren't that many black people hunting ghosts. Because <laughs> yes. black hunting folks goes, really don't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Like, it's a lot more people now, but I'm talking about go back 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 to 15 right. years ago. 
it was real quiet and hush was the word yeah. <laughs> about Black Ghost Hunter. So we literally searched high and low. I remember us going on Facebook about 10 years ago and typing in paranormal investigation or paranormal groups and getting like thousands of Facebook groups of people all over the country. And we literally wrote out one big message. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we're looking for black ghost hunters. Da, da, da. Are there any in your organization? Do you know anyone? Can you put us in contact? We sent out about a thousand messages, and literally every day we would go back and check responses, and it would be like the first message: "Black, black. ghost hunter." <laughs> they had to put all the black A's in there, but like H A H A H A, not just A's. There was one that had question marks, <laughs> like they didn't know what black or ghost hunter uh, was. Well, <laughs> what? That, that, they come, they come in that form? Right. Oh, they don't make those. <laughs> <laughs> that model hasn't been executed right. yet. <laughs> Literally, we couldn't find not a single person. It was one psychic lady in, like, England. And I think she might have been mixed. Yeah, okay. (laughs) She was like, my granddaddy was black. (laughs) Did that count? Does that count? (laughs) But we could find no one. So we just did it one time ourselves. Mm -hmm. One time. And we shot a video, edited it down to maybe a minute and a half of just us running and screaming and not really knowing what we were doing because we didn't have any equipment, no cameras, no money, nothing. And we put it on YouTube. And that was it. And that like is amazing. Five yeah. years later, I'm in LA. Juwan's in Atlanta working. Marcus is building his own shop. Get a random email. And then the impetus came. And the imp- this yes. is when the impetus comes. <laughs> yeah. This is when it this, starts. This is when impetality is happening. Impetality is happening. Impetnadas definitely was brought to the table. <laughs> Implementation. <laughs> right. right now. The impetizing. Uh. <laughs> the emperor's eyes <laughs> was staring. <laughs> but no, a random email. It was a television production company. They said oh. that they were working with a television network. They were interested in producing a show about black ghost hunters. They said that the only clip that they could find of black people ghost hunting was this one minute clip that we posted on YouTube five years earlier. Wow. Wow. So they say, we just have one question for you. Like, are you and those guys on that film? Like, are y'all, are really y'all professional? Right. <laughs> no, are y'all we really wait, black? Wait, first off, <laughs> let's start we want to make sure that we're PC. <laughs> we're checking the box hey, here. This is, Tom here. Know. <laughs> this is Tom here. This is Tom here. Are y'all black? No, no, no. no African-American. African-American. <laughs> we can't say coat. I mean, right. no, we can't go there. Uh, right. <laughs> But no, so they was like, no, I but serious question, you guys are professional paranormal investigators. Mind you, we've only done it for 20 minutes, yeah. six years ago, <laughs> oh <my laughs> on a YouTube video. But you know, we some hustlers. But in actuality, <laughs> think about it. Like, you, like, are we professional? Like, listen, if you want us we, to be. Listen, Hulk Hogan <laughs> loves us. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan, all of them love and us. Emmett Smith. All what do they have in common with us? <laughs> we are all professionals, baby. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering where I was wondering. Goats and no, professionals. Okay, right? we lied. Oh man, we lied. We lied to them folks because I'm like, if you bold enough to send me an email and call me and ask me this very specific question. I need to know where this is going. We're here. Right. Now. I'm not going to cut it off at the ankles and yeah. tell you no. You oh, know right. what I mean? I to hear the definition of professional <laughs> yeah. ghost hunter. Right. 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 Yeah, man. We got, we got. Yeah, there's a, a wide open field. There. Man, we oh, have, man, we got EKG meters and uh, <laughs> we, we, got pro, we, we got KEG. We got, we got proton packs. <laughs> man, we are ready to C-T-E. go. <laughs> Wait, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> that's funny. I got a phone call right after that. Like, yo, Juwan, if you get a call. Just say your yes. Just say yes. yes. Your yes. Just Whatever say your yes. yes. Just yes. say yes. your yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You're a professional yeah, ghost hunter. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I actually absolutely. have a badge. That's what I told you. And it was funny how they were trying to quiz me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just taking taking the story to, somewhere else all the time. It's like, so when was the first time you investigated? See, now investigation is really fun. <laughs> right. And we do it often. <laughs> Next question. Never, I used to say, but I've never been indicted. <laughs> but I've never been indicted. And you won't catch my fingerprints. It wasn't until we got flown to New York. We, they flew us to New York. And it was a, a room full of people in, in suits. <laughs> like These are like the production head of head networks. This network. They wanted to meet us. We walk in this room. It's about 17 <laughs> white people sitting around a table. We're like, oh, okay. 
it's gonna so be it cool. is real. Right. <laughs> it's going to go either way. It can go either way. <laughs> and it went the right way. Yeah, right. It went the we right was like, look, way. man, be honest with y'all. Look, we're not trying to do a show where y'all trying to prop us up to be these professional ghost hunters. We've never done it before, but I think that's where the magic is in this show. Yeah, you absolutely. have three mm-hmm. real life friends coming into an environment that they've never been in and giving honest, actual reactions. And that's mm-hmm. what we brought to the table. And we told them, like, we didn't want to be in a position where you have us trying to lie to people saying that we've been doing this shit for the past hundred years mm-hmm. and this is what we do in our spare time and we're these Ed and Lorraine Warren's proteges right. and all of this stuff. As nah. much as I, I didn't even know who Ed and, Ed and Lorraine honest, I still was. Don't. I still don't. When we did the Conjuring episode. <laughs> yeah, that's what we found out. Last season. Oh yeah. yeah. Man, I love I know the Shireen, Lorraine Hotel. I love, I love Shireen and Sydney and Shireen. Oh, oh my God. No, what's funny is like even though it was like this big like out of water experience for us, right? We were just kind of like fish out of water in this moment. We were new um, and as vulnerable as we were, I think that really helped our journey. I think people were able to connect to us more because of the authenticity and vulnerability that they saw in these episodes. I mean, you, it's three best friends and like if you put us in a terrifying situation, like you really get to see our real reactions, uh, but you get to learn, we're learning so much about each other in front of the world. Mm-hmm. And that's like a really vulnerable place for us, but a beautiful place for our show. And I think that was the, like the earnestness that really count, like catapulted us. Because that's funny because that you said that we were learning each other because at the time, Dalen and Jawan, you know, they had already had their friendship as far as like line brothers, you know, going to college together, master programs. I met Dalen um, by just random random project that we were doing together that uh, really brought up, brought us and a lot of other talented people together that kind of like made like a really impact. So we were like vibing on that. So I didn't even meet Jawan until we kind of like started talking about, you know, us like really linking and doing this. And so, you know, each investigation was like- but Y'all was working together before that, weren't y'all? We, we started working together our first season. First but we season. had like, we had crossed paths. So like yeah. we, like we were both in television. All three of us were in television and film before we did the show. Right. But we worked behind the scenes. So I did wardrobe. He did hair and makeup. Mm-hmm. He was also doing oh, nice. wardrobe. And so, like, Marcus and I, like, we knew of each other. Mm-hmm. He was cutting hair. I was in the wardrobe department. So it's kind of like we knew each other, but we had never really worked together. This project came about. Um, and that's when we kind of, like, had moments where we had to sit down and just have conversations and really kind of got to know each other. But that was – we didn't start working together until, I want to say – like yes. Our first show, our first season, our first season, we started working wow. on a project outside of Ghost Brothers, which yeah. was kind of crazy because we were literally going from, I think we were doing either promo or we were still filming a few episodes when we started a show. The show that me and him were working on was called Survivor's Remorse. Mm-hmm. It was a, a Stars Network show. Um, <clears throat> he was doing the wardrobe, I was doing the cuts, and like you said, when we're when you're working on set together. I'm in one trailer, he's in another trailer. We only kind of come together when when the actors are on set and start kind of chopping it up then. But it was cool because like we had a whole show and we were working as like just regular guys, you know what I'm saying? So people were like, y'all have a TV show? Why y'all even here? Like, uh, cause we only getting $2 per episode. <laughs> <laughs> the first season was rough, but you well, know. I, it, I also don't think anybody understands that notion mm-hmm. that a lot of these shows, you know, even at TAPS, TAPS started where they're always doing plumbing. You know, mm-hmm. they're doing their job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's because there's not, again, professional ghost hunter. So like a professional ghost hunter, you mean somebody who's making their living? because they're chasing ghosts yeah. and mm-hmm. not selling the fact that they're chasing ghosts mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know writing the book that they sell because they're chasing ghosts mm-hmm. and it's interesting because uh, that that tells us how passion oriented it is how you know uh, inspired by the talent it is um, I know when you guys first showed up on the scene uh, I, I immediately latched on because uh, you approached it with humor which is something that was m- just missing because if you take ghost hunting too seriously, you're you're missing a whole part of the experience. Right. Because humor and fear go oh, hand in hand. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so watching you guys just riff off of each other or, or in the situation really did it, it connected. It was a far more connective experience than watching Talking Heads explain and 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 go through the very serious you know ghost hunt. And you would be you'd be surprised at how. 
Um, and this is just being honest, like a lot of network people typically aren't very creative. Sure. And that's not even in a bad sense. No, it's no. just they see what's good and they, they're going to, you know, lean into their investment. So the first season, they were really on us about trying to calm our humor down. Like, oh. y'all remember all that stuff? It was like, you know, we really need you guys to be a little bit more serious. And it's like, uh, I don't know. I just, for some odd reason, all of us kind of like fought back with on that, but not necessarily in like a defining way. It was like, well, if you can make us not be funny in this yeah. situation, mm -hmm. then good luck to you. But like, we're seeing things that we've never seen before reacting off of each other. Like, Never seen each other in fear, never seen each other like, you know, uh, like handle any of these crazy situations. So it's like it was impossible for us not to have some type of way to where we can break the tension Absolutely. when we're in something that we've never seen before. And just right. because like we find something funny or there's a, a underlining humor doesn't mean we're not taking it serious. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And it's that was the, that was really the interesting thing that we had to kind of always kind of get across. But that's just our personalities. Like, you put yeah, us in yeah. any sense. If we got kidnapped together right now, yeah. it's going to be jokes. It's so, going to be jokes in the back why, of that bed. Why you, over there, why you over there crying? Yeah. Somebody get my name. <laughs> like, Do you see it took three people to grab Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> that's because I was fighting. I was strong. I was strong. You see, I didn't take nobody to get David right. in. Right. He just got David in. David just walked in by himself. <laughs> walked in and put the blindfold on by himself and said, take me. <laughs> Use me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's um, it been things like that that make ghost hunting fun because, yeah. like, something we talk about on the show even is a lot of times ghost hunting can be really boring. It's just, like, sitting around waiting for sometimes. something to happen. Right, sometimes. <laughs> what, have what, what, what investigations have y'all been on? Where, uh, but I feel what you're saying, yeah. Right. Ghost hunting is, like... It's 99%. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's like fishing. It's like police work. If you yes. ask a police officer, like, the, the thrill of being a police officer, what's the percentage of that? Like mm -hmm. on your day to day, they'll tell you like ninety five percent of the day is just you riding around. Uh, it's yeah, you yeah. get it's very small percentage where something interesting happens, and it's the same way with ghost hunting. Like it's very rare that you know what I'm saying, as soon as you walk into a place, doors start slamming. <laughs> <Right. and laughs> we are part, we like us as a community of like that have like production like television shows or what. Mm -hmm. We're part to blame though because like we oh, yes. have to have we're making something that's entertainment. So like our show, yes, it's an hour long, 30 minutes long, and you're thinking that something's happening all the time. Every three or four minutes in this yeah. hour. But you don't realize that we've investigated this place for a three week. Three days. Yes. It takes right. three to four days to film to every all single of that. night. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so like you get this, people get this false sense of like what a, an investigation is actually like. Yeah. What it, it's, you literally are sitting there for hours on end trying to just see if you can get one piece of evidence that may or may not make sense to you at mm -hmm. the time. Like you're trying to build the story together and it's wild. It's like watching paint dry. It, bro, it's, oh my gosh, I'm glad you said that. So like on, on my YouTube channel, all I do is go to cemeteries and just use spirit box sessions. Right? Yeah, shout shout out, out, wait, shout shout out, out to oh, it. Hey, 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 uh, shout out to it. Hey, hey, hey. Graveyard yeah. shift. Congratulations, bro. 100K. 100K, 100K subscribers. Congratulations. Subscribers. Congratulations, Congratulations bro. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank this you. man started this Pod, this joint a year ago. Was it a year? Less than a year, baby. Less than a year. Nice. 11 months, his, baby. What was your goal? Tell them what your goal was. My goal for one year was 15,000 subscribers. Now, baby. where you at? I am at 100,000. Where, where your pockets feel like? Hey, hey listen. Hey, hey, we, we ain't talking about that right now. We do it, baby. Come on, but baby. No, man, but what's no, that's interesting fantastic. is, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Dalen Spratt on YouTube. Dalen Spratt. And the show that I do is called The Graveyard Shift. So yeah, so, but I do spirit box sessions. So I go to a cemeteries and I go to people's graves. I cut on a spirit box and I try to just have a conversation. But people are so used to watching television. They're like, why don't you just do an EVP at the grave? Like do a whole video just doing an EVP at the graveyard. And I was like, okay, let's, let's really talk this out from a production standpoint. A spirit box works because there's constant chatter coming out and you can kind of have a conversation. A EVP is just you holding a recorder, asking a question, and then recording silence for 10 to 20 to 30 seconds, and then trying to listen back to see if you hear something. People don't realize it takes you 30, 40, 50 times of doing this mm -hmm. <laughs> and listening. To get one to high. Get a, right. 
Did they, say, did they like, say hi? Sometimes you have to go back on right. your computer with your headset. <laughs> like, it's and not really. And, I, and you're right. I blame us on television for putting out an hour-long television show that got damn 30 EVPs, <laughs> a shadow figure, a door slamming. <laughs> and I don't know how crack. we did it. I don't know how <laughs> we did it. Somebody getting their booty rubbed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Every episode. Every episode. Every episode. Every episode somebody somebody get filled up. And it's filled not up. by an angel. But again, Come on like now, you no said, Della. we're in there for five days. Yeah. We're doing three days of investigating. We're doing two days of interviews in this place so we're you're shooting hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage every right. single week exactly. to get that yeah yeah so yeah you done okay. he felt he felt he felt away about that that's that's yeah. good stuff yeah. that man felt away about that <laughs> so uh, we saw well we've seen the episode of y'all doing the fitzpatrick hotel and we wanted to compare um okay. with how your experience was uh because we recently went out there and we just got that place i don't know what is happening with their ghosts but they're starved they mm. need attention because they were like as soon as we came in he was with it mm -hmm. so how is it for y'all uh if i know that was like season one so it's been a while but like still no yeah, it's the Fitzpatrick Hotel, um, <clears throat> mostly because we got really interesting Estes method sessions out of that. Which yeah. I thought you about to say something else. Oh, <laughs> we got a really interesting STDs out there. Whoa. What? Whoa! Spiritually we transmitted. Gotta watch out for those spiritually, spiritually transmitted diseases. Gotta watch out for those spiritually transmitted diseases, man. They come in hot. They come in hot. They gotta wrap you. up. They gotta wrap up and prayer, Especially baby. if you like a human trigger object. Like, oh, it's true. Um, yeah, we were just like they. It felt like they were just not no pun intended dying uh, to talk. You know, like they really wanted to, especially the little girl spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you encountered her at all. Um, that was my room. Yep. Yes, we was, yeah. stayed in. That was yeah. my room. Yeah. yeah, and we were the only people in the entire place. They put me in that room, yep. and then they were all behind the uh, front desk, yep. as far as humanly possible in the hotel. Yeah. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like yep. alone in Mirrorland. Yep. And, and guess like, why that mirror? You're alone in Mirrorland, and that's still active. Yeah, I saw that. Whoa, no, whoa, thank you. A non-closed portal that still is open. <laughs> it's still open at Fitzpatrick Hotel due to Jawan Mass doing a Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary? Bloody of all, of all the things to do. And I'm a, uh, I'm a tough act to follow. But no, that was real, though. That was a very um, active spot. I mean, a lot of things happened. One, that was the first time I ever got touched by a ghost. Um, and it was a nice caress. <laughs> very, very, very polite, very nice, soft, like subtle. No. I at first it wasn't. Okay, right. <laughs> nice. but she, they convinced me. They convinced me. They convinced me. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay, we can we can have it happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can have it happen. They gave me their paperwork and everything, but nonetheless, um, no. Also, in the basement, I, I experienced some crazy stuff. Yes. I was sitting in an isolation situation, and I don't know if y'all there was like a door that started lighting up. Oh, like. The rim of the joint started lighting up. I had never seen anything like that in my life. That's why I went right back up them stairs. So, mm -hmm. yeah, actually, yeah. So the first night that we were there, I was in my room and they basically called me like, what are you doing? Because they heard this huge crashing sound, like just an ungodly crashing sound, which was a little weird because they think that somehow I was making this ungodly crashing mm -hmm. sound. Well, we thought you fell down the stairs. Right. Oh, and okay. it's like, we were like, oh God, Chris is but dying. The second, <laughs> yeah, the second night we were going down into the basement and the cellar door slipped out of my hands and slammed shut. And that was the sound they heard. They heard mm. that cellar door slamming all on its own in the middle oh, of the night. Wow. I'm telling you. There's something off with yeah. that cellar. That's an off place. Um, no, that cellar was, was crazy. crazy. Location yeah, because yeah. all that, what, wasn't that where they hung the young lady or something? Yeah, Polly Barclay. Polly Barclay, yeah. Par yeah. yeah, I remember that. I couldn't knowing his history. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't remember, I couldn't get her name to save my life during the episode. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I think y'all made fun of me for that. What's her name, Marcus? Shut up. <laughs> Larley, Marley, Parley, Beckerson. What's up? <laughs> It really, it really was so active, you know, it's, um, and it's interesting because it, like after that investigation, because it was so active, we were like, oh God, everybody's going to think this is just like how every investigation goes. I'm like, no, these are ghosts in the middle of Georgia with mm -hmm. nothing around them. And they're like, yeah. please interact with us. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was interesting that y'all went there and it seemed like you were getting some pretty similar activity in the way of, um, I know the flashlight situation was happening. Yeah, you no. were, 
Yeah. You know, the spirit boat board that we made. Yeah, and no. Board. And that was a new one to me. Yeah. The spirit circle. The yeah. spin the bottle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was not familiar with that one yeah. until yeah. that episode. We, we, were, we weren't either. We weren't either. Yeah. We, we were forced were. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. They, Are you really? Yeah, because we couldn't use a Ouija board on television because of uh, copyright, the name, right? copyright. Yeah. Oh. And stuff. So we, we just, just made like, a life size. Spirit Let's just make board. one ourselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I saw yeah, it, I was like, huh. Yeah. yeah. That it, seems very invitingly dangerous. Yeah. And it, yeah. Surprisingly, it worked. On the board, in the board. I was like, mm, listen, bro, know. listen. That, that was probably the fifth time in life that we had ever investigated anything, y'all. Oh, we was winging. We, it. We're living loose, baby. But it worked. Oh, Let's just say it worked. Right. Sure it, uh, living it, loose is what they called it. You're just living wild and loose. Fast, no, fast and loose. Fast, fast, fast and loose. loose. Fast and loose is what we were doing in those wild investigations. And free, fast and loose. There you go. So for your investigation tonight, what are you hoping to get out of it at the Sorrel Weed House? Some love. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. right. You got touched last time. So is that what I, you're looking for this time? Hey, man. So is that touch now a, a standard thing that happens to you? Not just to me. Somebody yeah. always gets touched. Somebody touch, gets touched. Like. They, I, really, yeah. they really like Dalen a lot of times, though. No, they don't, Marcus. Well, <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Dalen, <laughs> you, you, lie, you actually lie very well, and you're doing it right now. Cause you know those ghosts love you. Every five shows, who touched my ass? <laughs> <laughs> well, we was, was at the say, where, where was we at the um, what was the uh, the uh, the lumber yard sawmill. sawmill? Oh my but that, gosh! But that wasn't necessarily an ass grab. That was a I felt like trying to take my wallet. Check, okay, a oh, pickpocket. Hey. Cause the whole story behind that place was like they would kill people to you know get better wages. So like sure. if your boss or coworker might make a little dollar extra more than you, and he's working a little bit too close to the chipper, you might just <laughs> you know no. what I mean? yeah, Lord. yeah, you knock them on out, knock out the competition. Mm. But so yeah, it felt like someone Jawan was standing behind me, and we were interviewing someone. And I thought that Juwan had stuck his hand, his raw hand, <laughs> I didn't into like my back. You set that up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like how you said that. His raw hand on my ass. The punchline fell on me grabbing your ass, bro. And that just wasn't how. Rip your raw hand. hand. Rip oh, your bro. raw hand. Tell me, man. I don't know if that's a raw hand. That's a raw hand. Does he lick his hand? I didn't put the whole raw, accusation bro. on raw, you, man. He licked raw. his hand. <laughs> that's how you knew it was raw. Bro. <laughs> raw implies raw implies that it was skin to skin. That's what he was trying to say. That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. You went through that shirt and said the wall. Face right in his hand. Oh. Who was that? I hope they don't find the But no, I thought that's what it was. But Juwan swore up and down it that he did. <laughs> and I ain't see him jack his hand back. You didn't see him jack his hand back. <laughs> by the time I look. But yeah, it literally felt like somebody put their hand like on my this is, cheek where my wallet was. But, that's funny. <laughs> to answer your question, because yeah, we're straying. We're straying. Yeah. Lord, forgive us. That's okay. But no, man um, said raw honestly, hand. this investigation at Surreal Weed House is going to be, it's just going to be like a paranormal one-on-one. Like sure. a lot of times people come out and they have not been paranormal investigated before. Um, so we just kind of show them the ropes. Um, this is a good location because this is where we actually shot our sizzle. So people don't know that. So like, we're going to go and just kind of give them the, the little one, twos and threes of paranormal investigating. Um, and then it's always tough cause you got a group. Right. right. So then like you, it's really contamination. tough to do, like, mm. get evidence because of, like he said, contamination. So basically um, what we're saying is just lower those expectations. Yes. You come in. Right. Right. That's worth, worth <laughs> noting because there's there's uh, organizations and there are there are there are ghost hunts available, you know, pay for play all over the whoa. country. Whoa. Where is when, the where, 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 what they do? Where, where, where the <laughs> people <laughs> pee? That's why the beds in the back. I got you. I'm here paying to play out here, baby. Um, but if you're going on these ghost hunts with thirty to forty people, yeah. uh, yeah. you are really you know, cutting the difference. You're you are now, you know, just saturating the place with a lot of different energies and a lot of yeah, different, yeah. you know, people looking in different ways. And and the experience can be watered down. So you have to kind of, yeah, pull back on the expectation of it yeah. being, you know, a, a ghost hunting television show atmosphere and being, you know, a good learning experience. Yeah, yeah. you tell people all the time, man, ghosts are people too. So you can't come right. in here trying to expect them to jump through hoops just because it's right. 40 people in yeah. here. Yep. Right. Yep. right. Like, yep. What can you do? Do who, something. Who brought y'all to my right. house? Like, bro, it's 1130. Just because I'm telling you to dance don't mean you go dance right now. It just doesn't work. It's 1130 right. and y'all all are in my house. <laughs> my house. I'm really hoping y'all will leave. That, right. That's how, like, you remember back in the day when you'd be sleeping, your mama call you down and right. you'll dance. Get up, Mark. <laughs> Show them the day she did it back It's 12 o'clock. It's a school night. They out there playing cards. Man, 
would. It, yeah. That's funny. It's so true, you know, and um, that's actually something I, I tell guests a lot because people come to Savannah and they're like, I expect to see a ghost in this town because we have that, you know, stigma with our ghosts. Our ghosts are hams. They love attention. Mm -hmm. So that's good. You're likely to have an experience if you look hard enough, I guess. But um, I always tell people my, my version is ghosts aren't on the payroll. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't make a ghost just pop out of right. the walls. You know, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. If it does happen, great. You had an experience. That's wonderful. Um, but also, some people are not great to have in a paranormal sense because some yeah. people are just not the energy that you want in that Yep. situation and that's I'm like, real you know it's mm -hmm. um and, and you can't tell people that like we sometimes like, experience people in the group that are just really here to antagonize right you know what I mean? they're like a friend of somebody they right. came in and they're like they're demanding to see a ghost but they're doing it in such like the most like obnoxious way possible and like that really is unfortunate for like those who are really trying to take this uh this time seriously but i don't know it's to your point, I can right. understand. Well, yeah, and you know, it's and, and at the very least, they're going into a really awesome house, you know, and getting to experience that because the history of the Sorrel Weed House is just so fascinating, right. and um, all of the experiences that people have had there. I mean, you can't deny those experiences, especially when so many people have had the same ones over the years. Um, so I'm glad that y'all are doing the Sorrel Weed House. It's mm -hmm. like one of our favorite houses in oh, the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great Absolutely. Time. Shout Definitely. out to Calvin, man. And the oh, my gosh. Here, He's man. great. The homie, Calvin. We love Calvin. And he has done such a good job. If you have not watched that deep dive that we did on the Sorrel Weed House and we interviewed Calvin and a couple of the tour guides, um, you should watch that episode. I believe, JT, is that a Para Junkie yeah. exclusive? Become a Para Junkie so you can see that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all better, yeah. better hop on that Para yeah. Junkie. Yeah. Y'all better, get, yeah. better get on it. Y'all better get on, on it. Yeah. Tie off. Tie off on that thing. <laughs> on that doggone pair That's drunk. exactly where it came from, though, is because, yeah. uh, well, Chris made the uh, comparison of when you have your first paranormal experience, it's uh, like ghost heroin. Mm -hmm. um, you get so y'all were strung so out wow. at one point, too. So, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could have yeah. sold to you. Okay. That's yeah. what yeah. I need to know. Customer. Them customers, baby. <laughs> them customers, baby. <laughs> That's how we count them. That's all I heard. Cha-ching. That's all you heard. <laughs> That's all I heard. I didn't hear nothing else but cha-ching. <laughs> I'm feeding it, baby. Exactly. We got the food and, later. Um, our listeners, they ran with that one. And so yeah. they named themselves they named the themselves Para Junkies. Para Junkies. Para junkies. So, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, make a t shirt right? with a big old heroin needle <laughs> <laughs> with a ghost in it, with a ghost, <laughs> with a ghost inside. Like, oh. <laughs> Go ahead, give me 20% of that one. Yeah, guy. that's that cute. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can have Hollow Weekend if we can have that idea. But, uh, <laughs> oh, man, the heroin <laughs> needle might go a little bit longer than the Hollow Weekend, maybe. No, it has crossover, <laughs> crossover, yeah, crossover. Yeah, maybe. Right. right? You gonna put that's the forever. you gonna put the logo right here? You gonna put the logo right here on the arm? Oh That's going to be kind of cool, though. That would be cool. But That's dope. Yeah. What's the, what's, what's the craziest thing that's happened on the ether? Oh, yeah. Mm. So JT um, just asked from the ether, um, what's the craziest <laughs> thing that, like, paranormal experience that you've had on your YouTube channel? Uh, I don't know if it's crazy, but it was just really, really interesting. Uh, I was in the cemetery, and I, I typically try to look for older graves, like visually, and I know it sounds bad, just like visually appealing headstones. Yeah. Something that's just not like, you know, a square that's on the ground. Nothing's wrong with that, but just as a backdrop, you always like elaborate something for people to look at. If you like saw this fireplace in it, you'd be like, oh, oh that's cool. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not? But so I was walking around the mausoleums in one of this one cemetery in Mableton, Georgia. And uh, well, the crypts, you know, the ones that look like little mailboxes, but they're all like people in them. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I'm just walking by, <clears throat> and y'all, I, I stumble. I literally tripped over what I thought was like, I don't know, my foot or just the concrete, just being clumsy. I stumble. So in my mind, I tell my audience, I fell for a reason, obviously. So why not just do a spirit box session here? So I sat down, the mausoleums are behind me, or the crypts are behind me. And I'm just like, does anybody want to talk to me? They're like, yeah. And they was like, I was like, where are you? They was like, look around. So I looked this way. And it was like, no, the other way. Oh, oh. shit. Okay, all right. So I looked this way. And there was literally this one name on the script. And it said Hakeem Williams. But he passed away last year, 2022. Oh, wow. Oh. I never try to talk to anyone that passed away in recent years just out of respect for their families that are sure. living because people don't believe in it. People right. don't agree with it. So everyone I talk to is like 1800s. Right. 
something was just like Google Hakeem Williams that passed away in 2022. And so, uh, yeah, I Google him and this change.org, uh, you know, the signature, it mm-hmm. pops up and it was from his mother. And apparently he was killed in prison last year and his mother is just trying to figure out what happened. Oh, wow. So I pull this mm-hmm. article up. I'm like, man, all right. And so I do the spirit box session. He literally he tells us his name. And he says that uh, I, I was asking specific questions about what happened. And I was like, is there any evidence? And they was like, there's no evidence. He made a comment that the person who was responsible for it is not there anymore. And he kept saying, set up. These are what just kept coming out the oh, box. Wow. Mm-hmm. That was the end of the session. I didn't think nothing else of it. I posted it on YouTube. Literally, a girl that we went to college with, Jania. I don't know if you remember Jania, dark skinned Jania. Yeah. Man, I don't talk to. I ain't talked to this girl since college. She hits me up on Instagram. And she was like, "Dalen, I've been messaged by like three people that I don't know that they're looking for you." I said, "They message you? They looking for me? I'm all tough and shit. Like, who looking for me? <laughs> who? Who looking for Dalen? <laughs> <laughs> you a real yeah, he getting real. Yeah. She was like, "Are you out here talking to like dead people or something?" And I, she doesn't follow the ghost side of Dalen. This is sure. somebody I went to college with right. mm-hmm. 20 years ago. And I was like, well, I kind of do this YouTube show where I go to cemeteries. And she was like, well, whoever you talk to. Was that how you typed it? Yeah, I was like, Dick. okay, let's make it <laughs> sure. Like she was like, whoever you talk to, their, their mother, stepfather, and the mother of their child is trying to reach you. Holy cow. And I was like. <laughs> Did they sound mad? Was they mad? Because you know uh, they don't play like that, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, I wanted to say nothing. You say he had a gun when you seen him, right? Who you don't play like that? Who play like that? Who play like that, Craig? But no. Who play like that, Smokey? So I end up checking my messages in like the dummy folder of Instagram. You know, they have like that third folder that you never check. There was a message from this young lady. And it was the young man, Hakeem's, it was the mother of his child. And she was telling me, she was like, Dalen, I'm writing you this message with tears in my eyes. She was like, I just watched the video that you did with Hakeem. And she was like, what else did you get from him? Because everything that you were saying was absolutely correct. Oh, wow. She said that, he said that the person who did it was no longer there. That was one thing. He said that there was no evidence. And he said that he was set up. She said what happened was a security guard handcuffed him in his cell. His cellmate then stabbed him to death. The video footage was taken away and was removed, so there's no evidence. The person responsible for it is no longer there. The security guard quit and moved somewhere else. And him being set up, she tied him or handcuffed him and allowed the prisoner to do it. She was like, we just don't have any way to prove any of this. You know what I mean? So we're battling trying to figure this out. But the fact that Hakeem validated that stuff to you, she said, just lets us know. Like, so it, that just blew my mind. That's incredible. Like that took my, it took what I did to a whole mm-hmm. nother level. Cause I never, it's easy to go sit in a graveyard, have a conversation with somebody that passed away in the 1800s and you're hearing what's coming out the box, but you're just playing verbal charades, trying to put some piece, something together as opposed to someone who literally died 10 months ago and are telling you what happened to them. Oof. And their living family is validating what they're saying. Wow. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Now you, want, now you like Batman. Bro, listen. Right. I left there. I was like, okay, now I got, listen, I got to solve some crimes. Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> now, now you can really do this for the time. people. Bro, I left now there. Now there's, you now there's a series behind it. Listen, man, I went, to, I, mean, tell you, I went to John Bonet Ramsey right after yeah. that. I went to her grave. Did you really? I did. I <gasps> damn, God damn it, I did. Didn't nothing come from it, okay. but I went. But you was, you was I close. Was, I was close. I was waiting for a new at, clue. I'm like, is this nah, going to be the episode? She has a, you got to watch that video. She has a pinwheel. Someone oh, left a pinwheel yeah. at her grave. Y'all, hand to God, if you watch the video, it's not an ounce of wind blowing that day. There's trees all in the background, bushes, no leaves are moving, anything. I'm like, hey, John Bonet, uh, do you mind if I sit down and talk to you? This pinwheel just spinning. I'm talking about like, you would have thought a car was going, uh, like mm. a wheel on a tire was, was wrapping up. Right. Yeah. There was no wind. So we literally have like a 30 minute conversation with her just stopping and starting this pinwheel. Wow. wow. It's crazy, man. That's that fantastic. stuff is real. That stuff yeah. is 100% real. Kid spirits love those pinwheels, though. It's like Amen. a really interesting way to investigate if you haven't tried that. Um, 
there's a uh, there's a pinwheel out at. Have you been to the uh, abandoned amusement park, uh, Shawnee Lake Shawnee? Is that Lake Shawnee? Shawnee. Yeah, Lake Shawnee no. out in West Virginia. Yeah. It is. That place is creepy. Um, yeah. It's a bunch of kid ghosts, and they have a pinwheel. And apparently, like the little boy who drowned in the lake or whatever when it was an amusement park, he uh, communicates through that. And we caught it on camera when we were doing. It was the same way. We walked up and we were like, "Hey, um, if you're here, you know, can you spin the pinwheel?" And it just goes, yeah. and we're like, um, and same thing no wind nothing at all and we caught it on camera where he started doing you know that thing like like old people do where they go like ooh, ooh, ooh. like mm-hmm. with the glasses <laughs> he literally started flicking my glasses on camera and we're like this is so creepy but i think kids find it more interesting and easier to communicate through simple objects like that yeah um mm-hmm. you yeah. know because it's uh familiar <laughs> and it's not scary why same reason why the boo bears work um right, if, right, right. You know, or cat balls, or cat balls, balls and things like that, because cat it's balls. like it's not a REM pod where you sit it out and it's like touch that glowing yeah. sphere or uh, the strange what is canister it? that yeah. screams at you if you get close to it. Right. Exactly, um, that's insane. Were they were they calling uh, those bears boo bears before we started calling them that? No, we called it gangsta boo. We called it gangsta boo, right? <laughs> There's always a boo bear. Okay. Yeah, the boo bears. Oh, buddy or something like that. Boo-buddy, yeah, yeah, something Boo-buddy. like that. And there's all sorts of ones, but um, but yeah, if you do go back and you do get any kind of yeah. evidence, let us know because I love. I sure. Don't I? I do not love it for the reason that I'm happy that she's dead. I love that case just because I find it incredibly interesting. Um, but y'all, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, um, thank you for having me. Yes. Appreciate you. You are just you're just so fun. Like all yeah, three of you are absolutely. so fun. Thank and you. I really um, took it personal. I thought she was just talking about Dalen for a second. Listen, man, oh, listen, no. guys. She, she was definitely so wasn't funny. doing that. She <laughs> definitely <laughs> wasn't doing that. I was like, wow. Talent you're, knows talent, guys. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all, really feeling the segregation right yeah, now. It's all right. No. Y'all over there, we man, over here. Cheer no, I, keeps I, me I on point, it. baby. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. It's on point. It's on point. Comfortable. Yeah. No, honestly, um, y'all have just changed everything for paranormal investigation, it's and um, it, you're really people to look up to in the community. So that's dope. Yeah, it's. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like we cut the line, <laughs> but I'm not mad. I am uh, not listen. gonna front either. Uh, there, there is a thing the called affirmative <laughs> action. Yeah, I would say <laughs> that far. We are Even more than for that, it. is, is is there's the full on stigma that we just like accepted forever because I'm reminded of you know the Eddie Murphy. Uh, joke mm-hmm. about how short a horror movie would be, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, how short yeah, Abbeville yeah, Horror yeah. would be if, if a black family bought it, because they're <laughs> just like, get out, gone. All right, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, because you got uh, it. even like, uh, you know, I've been doing ghost tours in this town and, and, and investigations in this town for 30 years, and there is a, a whole, you know, we don't talk about that in our family. We don't, we, we, we mm-hmm. don't explore that. Right. You know, we, we have our faith and our faith locks the door on that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if it does happen, it's the family. You know, mm-hmm. it, does not, it does not go past the porch. So that really creates this interesting thing that, because I think that since you've been so public and so uh, successful, there has been a, a, a uptick in, in black ghost hunters, which is amazing. You know, you know because it is a field that was missing an entire demographic, really. Representation. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's almost like... Um, Almost like coming out the paranormal door, to be totally honest. Like a lot of times. The paranormal closet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the paranormal closet. There you go. Yeah. I didn't want to the come out there. Yeah, the yeah. broom closet. <laughs> so, <laughs> the broom closet. Marcus came out the closet. No, that's why I didn't want it to be. Sound bite. I didn't want it to be. I saw what they did there. See how you try, <laughs> see how you try <laughs> to manipulate yeah. narratives? He's a narrative shifter. We'll change it. Okay, if it's not the closet, it's the pantry. The pantry. The paranormal pantry. Marcus came out the pantry. Marcus came about the pantry. Now, trying now you're trying funny. to be funny. Okay, <laughs> okay. I see what's happening with them green pants. I see. Why you look down? <laughs> Just look down for no reason. <laughs> but, but now, what? Real talk though. Like um, a lot of times, like even when you see, it's funny because like now, like like you said, now that we do it, like there's so many like African Americans, like brothers and sisters, who come up to me and be like, "Yo, man, like I didn't want to tell nobody this, but every time I go into my basement." Like I hear down home blues in the back and some black and mild smoke always comes. I think it's my Uncle Johnny. Is so that right? You know what I'm saying? And we'd be like, yeah, that's, you know, confirm or deny or whatever. I mean, like you have people who are just like really, you know, feeling comfortable, um, not necessarily having to differentiate 
between their faith and their curiosity. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like they're blending both of them in now. So I think that's what we kind of do. Now, you know, it's crazy, man. This past weekend, <coughs> I had my 20 uh, year high school reunion. Okay. 20 years. Bro. Word. And I went back to the high school reunion, man. There was this one guy there, and this was like the thug of the school. Mm-hmm. Like, I. To you got honest, bodies. To be honest, I'm surprised to see you here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, out, you, said, you out? <laughs> right. You out? Man, okay. The road early. <laughs> okay, okay. Who wrote the wrote letter. <laughs> so, like, I'm sitting there chilling, man, doing my thing, man. Like, you know, I had a little drink in my hand, minding my business. And I feel somebody tap me on the soldier. And it was him. He was like, hey, Dalen. And I was like, uh, I went right back to high school. I ain't got no lunch money. I ain't got no lunch money. Hey, dog, stall me out, bro. Man, he was like, nah, Daly, man, put your lunch money back in your pocket, man. <laughs> he was like, man, I want to tell you, man. He was like, man, I, I like what you're doing out here. Like, what you talking about, man? He was like, man, them ghosts. Yeah. I said, what you mean, Carl? He was like, man, say, man, I believe in that stuff, bro. He said, I done caught your show a couple times, man. I just want to say, man, I appreciate what you're doing, man. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never really talked to nobody about, you know what I'm saying, the stuff I done seen. He was like, but seeing you do it, bro, I was like, damn, man. Like, it lets me know I ain't really tripping. Yeah. And I was like, damn, dog, bro. that's crazy. Bro, you used to beat people up off the of high school. <laughs> and bro. now you believe in ghosts. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because they're chasing you. Yeah. <laughs> I beat a couple Those people Those are now. the souls of the people that you dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's karma, buddy. <laughs> that's what it's called. That's <laughs> they're haunting you, my brother. Uh, but, yeah, but no, bro, it's, it's funny because uh, even like, man, I, I, I also cut hair, so... I cut a lot of celebrities here. One of the celebrities I cut is Nas. And it's amazing that every time we're on tour, he's like, hey, have y'all gone investigating any lately? He said he's seen every episode of Ghost Brothers. And it's like, I wonder who else watches this. Steve Nas is watching it. Right. I know I know Jay Z's watching it too. You know what I'm saying? Or At somebody least else. Heard of it. Heard, heard of it. it. Everybody and that's the funny thing about it. Like we were in Chicago, we were staying at a hotel, the Bellman, another brother was just like, he was like, Hey man, um, I didn't want to say nothing because, you know, you know, Nas is on here, but I love your show, dog. I was like, wow, you actually can, you actually recognizing. Say it it louder. Yeah, that that I'm here, that, you know what I'm saying? Like that you watch our show and I'm here doing another job. It's just funny to me. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. I think the biggest one for me was, uh, I don't know if y'all remember this. We was in New York, man. And there was, this was after the first season of Ghost Brothers aired. Okay. There was a producer there that worked with Oprah. And she said that uh, when our show first came out, they was all in the room together. Oh, right, yeah. And she was like, oh, these are these black ghost hunters. And Oprah was like, who, what? And she was like, yeah, the ghost brothers. And she's like, Oprah was like, oh, they're cute. I said, oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, Stan, 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 watch out, man. Watch out. I, do Listen, not. I don't mind being taken care of, hey, baby. I don't mind. <laughs> I can play my role, baby. I'll play my position. You can be, you can, you can be a, a brother husband? I'll, I'll be, be a brother husband. Easy. Come on, baby. I'm, I'm a right. brother husband, baby. I'm not going to cause no fuss. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, that's dope. Oprah said we was cute, man. Yeah, man. A lot of a lot of people rock with us. Man, it's really been a journey, but a blessing. Absolutely. Well, y'all are only going up, always, I'm sure. And so we're excited to see what you guys come up with next. And I'm very excited to watch all of your uh, cemetery videos please, please. now. Please, yeah. please. Um, That's going to be cool. Yeah, so, um, yeah, do y'all have anything else you want to plug before we wrap it up? We got New Jersey coming up, right, in November. Yeah, got a New Jersey Paracon coming up next weekend. Very nice. Uh, I mean, outside of our weekend, we got going on right now uh, here in Savannah. We got a whole lineup of things, so I don't know if you guys are out. We do have a couple of tickets still available. Straightghosting.com uh, um, You want to check that out. But, uh, man, you can follow us all on social media. Uh, I'm Juwan Mass on all things social. Uh, you can definitely check out my YouTube channel, too. I got some things coming out. Um, so, please, I would welcome all subscribers. Mm-hmm. Soon. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys again. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Try to get some sleep because my God, like you're just gonna be so busy. So yeah, yeah y'all, y'all try to rest. Don't don't work yourselves too hard. But uh, well, thank you guys again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And uh, with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all. And straight ghost him, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay, and straight ghost stay to the spooky, pair of junkies. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Get that fixed. Yeah. Get some Narcan. <laughs>